you are just starting with Liebscher and Bracht exercises. Nice that you are here and want to do something for your back. Today I will show you two exercises that even beginners should be able to do well. Can you do that? It's best if you try it out and find out. So that you can do these exercises properly and motivated. I will briefly explain to you how, in our view, back pain arises in most cases. Look, when we sit, our legs are at about this angle. There is a muscle, that is the hip flexor. It comes from here, that's where it's attached, goes over the groin. One part goes into the ilium and the other part goes to the lumbar spine. You see, it's much longer when standing than when sitting, because this part goes from here to up here, making the whole thing much shorter. The muscle and the fascia, everything that is tissue, will become shorter. Since we sit so much, the body is getting more and more used to the fact that it is getting shorter and shorter. This means that after a while, depending on whether you balance it out or not, most people do not balance it out, this force pulls more and more forward through the shortening here in the front. So this muscle pulls forward. Now the body naturally doesn't want to just walk around, but it actually wants to run. That means the glutes and the back extensors here pull the torso back up, the torso itself, and the torso in the hip joint. And this results in a pull that is opposite to the one forward. It pulls forward, it pulls backward, you're straight, but you're under tension, under strain. And according to our pain explanation model, the body triggers pain at a certain level of force, a certain level of this strain back here in the lower back to protect the discs from damage, so to speak. And there are also overload reactions that the muscles back here can no longer withstand, pulling so strongly backwards. In the first exercise, which I will show you now, the goal is to make what has become too short here in the front longer again by pulling on it. For this exercise, it is best to go to a wall so that you can hold yourself and stabilize a bit. And now you do the following, you bring the groins forward and the belly button back. And that's how you notice that your pelvis moves a little. So there is a pelvic position that promotes lordosis that would be more like it. And now you do the opposite. You should now pull in your navel and tilt your pelvis so that it is not tilted forward, but rather stands more upright. And this is the starting position. And now you push the groins forward and pull the belly button back. And then you quickly notice a pull here on the inside of the thighs into the groin. And this is the stretching of the muscles, which always shorten further when sitting. Push forward, pull back the belly button. It can also be noticeable in the back. You may feel it directly in your back. Then don't hesitate. Limit it to this intensity that still feels positive, but stick with it. And then you also notice that you can keep getting a little further into the stretch. Now try to see if you might also want to include the head. But be careful, it may cause a lot of discomfort, maybe even a little dizziness, because everything is so tight and knotted in your neck possibly, that then some compressions may occur. So that is not necessary, it is not needed for the back. If it feels good, it brings an additional stretch that spreads from the back upwards through the body and provides a sense of well-being. So, and now we start and do our strength training. How do we do that? We are leaning against the wall and now you tighten your abdomen and hips as if you wanted to lift yourself up, pressing your hands against the wall. And then you relax again and notice that you can go a little further into the stretch. And then we do that again. 
You practically press your hands against the wall with abdominal and hip strength, relax, go a little further into the stretch, and then slowly come out again. Move a little, feel inside, what does your pain say now? It could be that if you had back pain before, it is now a little less noticeable. This is no coincidence, this is a consequence of this exercise. Now we have made everything nice and long up front. The result was, of course, that it became shorter in the back. But the tensions are located in the back and we also want to release them, which means now we are making the counter movement. And don't be surprised if you think, how does that feel back there? Because we shortened it and now the normal length has to be restored. But we want to go beyond the normal. Look, I am leaning on this. If you are standing too unstable, then you can also put your hands on the chair or on the table and hold on a little. Otherwise, you press with your hands against your legs, against your knees, your thighs, or against your shins, depending on how deep you already are. And then you really notice that you are now stretching what was short in the previous exercise. Take your time, then you will notice how it keeps giving way. And go down with your hands so far that you can support yourself well. Then let's take a moment, because back there, the whole packed area, like a really tight package, is the back extensor. We are now unpacking this, so to speak. And then you can start to relax a little bit. By the way, if you notice that this exercise somehow hurts you in the popliteal fossa very early on, so that you can't go any deeper, then you bend your knees a little, I'll show you, then you bend your knees a little, and then you'll notice now you can go down more with your back. But if you can endure it with straight legs, then this stretch would be more complete then keep them straight. So no matter how, whether with straight knees or slightly bent knees, you always work yourself further down. And always, and always stay at an intensity level that is just positive. Don't push too hard, because especially when it pulls in the back of the knees, you won't want to do the exercise anymore, because it's just too uncomfortable. And that must never be. The exercises must always be such that it still feels good. So there should be a bit of stretching pain. We're talking about the kind of discomfort that's still positive and doesn't take away the enjoyment of the exercises. And now, wherever you are with your hands, reach behind your legs, hold on tight, and try to lift yourself up a bit with your trunk. but counteract with your hands so that the torso doesn't move. Relax and go a little deeper. And again, you pull as if you wanted to come up, then you relax again and go deeper. And you pull again as if you wanted to come up, relax and go a little deeper. And then you slowly come back up, shake your body and feel in. Tell me how it feels now. And to loosen things up a bit, you can do the following. Feel free to join me. You lean forward and then backward, gently and slowly overstretching a bit. but in a way that you now do both movements two or three times in a row. And again and again forward.
Give a thumbs up if you already feel some relief, if you notice, oh, something has changed. And if you want to do more for your back, here you will find a video, exercises for the lower back. And now I would like to show you the back hero quickly. For instance, you start at hip height, place it under the sacrum, and now you're overstretching and stretching, but without doing anything, so to speak, just resting. And depending on how you progress, you add another accessory to make it a little higher each time. And then you get more and more stretching and it stretches really nice inside and you rest while doing so. You can get information about it here. I am curious to see how the exercises work for you. So why don't you write some comments and keep us a little updated on what's happening with you. If you click here, you will find a great back routine. And down there you can subscribe to the channel. Do that and don't forget to activate the bell so you don't miss any videos. Goodbye.